All right, guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of the TMJ Show in the Doc Talk series. Today, we are talking to Tony all about how to stand out in rotations, how to get those honors, and most importantly, how to make yourself stand out for residency. Let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome to the TMJ Show. Today, we have Tony. Tony, how's it going? Good, good. Well, so what's going here. on, man? Uh, how can we help? What, what do you have? Uh, so I guess uh, my main concern is, well, I, I'm a second year med student. Uh, I'm actually, uh, I went to school in the Caribbean. Well, I, tech, I go to school in Caribbean, but it's because of COVID, we're uh, remote. So currently on Zoom. Uh, my biggest uh, question, I guess, and there's a lot of concerns with, you know, uh, matching and whatnot. Um, uh, and facing these obstacles, but how could I best set myself up when it comes to rotations? And because I know connections are a big uh, component to medicine. Um, and I like, I, I guess, how would you recommend I stand out when it comes to, you know, uh, rotating and working side by side with uh, potential sure. residencies and stuff? Cool. So how far are you away from starting rotations? Uh, so I have to first uh, take my step one, and that's going to that's gonna be here at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, once I pass that, then I'll, I'll go ahead and begin my rotations. I see. And because of COVID, is the way your rotations, the way it's going to work, is, has that changed? Or is it still going to be at your local institution? Or how's it going to work out? Uh, yeah, so it's going to be just how it... Uh, that has been... I mean, uh, from what I heard at the beginning of this pandemic, pandemic, uh, rotations were kind of limited but now uh, i think it's back, back to normal yeah sounds good so essentially how do you make yourself stand out and like set yourself up for a good residency is that, mm -hmm. is that a good yeah, way yeah. to summarize it cool. yeah. so usually you know i'm in a different position now because i actually get to like give people grades as an upper level resident um as i'm making this video um so i can give a little bit of insight of what i what i personally um do differently what i tell the students that i work with and it seems to work even when they go to other rotations is on day one of every rotation, make sure you sit with the people or find the people, uh, whether it's through email or personal interactions, and ask them their personal expectations because that way, you know, you kind of have a foundation of how they'll grade you. Ideally, you're being graded on a rubric, but no one really goes off a rubric. Everyone kind of has a personal idea of who is an honor student, who gets that A, and who is like an average student. Um, so they'll tell you what they to be considered to be the most important. So like that first day or two to get those expectations, um, and just being very honest of asking you, asking them of what their kind of hierarchy of things that they care about. Some people just want you to work really hard and get really better. That's kind of like my personal platform. So I'll tell my students that some people really do have an expectation. Like I want you to, you know, be able to manage X, Y, and Z problems by the end of the rotation and doing it well, doing it independently and doing it without the other residents helping you out. That just tells you like what you need to be at on the last week, last two weeks of that rotation and gives you a goal to reach for. Once you get those expectations, honestly, write those down. When you come home those, that, that first day, say my upper level resident, my attending gave me these expectations to go about and then ask yourself what type of things you'll do to really kind of hit all of those. Because, you know, if they've told you that this is important, ideally, if you focus on those, the time that you're working with them, they start to see examples where you're starting to echo their expectations. So that's where the beauty of that comes from. Um, and then, you know, every kind of week, or I would say like every 25% of working with them. So imagine if you're working with them for four weeks, then it would be every week. But if you're only working with them for two weeks, then it'd be like halfway through each week. Just ask them like how they think you're doing, what feedback they would give you. Um, ideally, they're giving you like micro feedbacks is what we call it on rotations and awards where I'm telling you how you're doing on your presentations. I'm telling you how you're doing with your patient interactions, how you're doing with your clinical knowledge but have like a quick, like two minute session with them of just saying what you can do differently, what they would want you to do better. And again, come home, ask yourself how you're meeting those expectations. Um, so that's a nice framework of saying, you know, here is how I impress without sucking up. It's more of like, here's what I think I need to do. Now assess midway, assess again, assess again. And ideally each time you're making that progress to that final expectation they have. Awesome, and, and it's not weird to, just flat out come and ask them and be like, hey, what is what is it that you expect of me? No, absolutely not. I recommend it if they don't. It's actually expected that your person that's evaluating you is going to come to you 
and tell you what they want to do but it depends on who the attending is you know i've been in experiences where they haven't told me anything and i kind of just did what i thought i was supposed to do sometimes it worked out but sometimes it didn't and so even as it may be awkward you know it's like hey can we you know especially on the first day it's where it's the least awkward because everything is awkward on the first day i'm saying hey is it okay if we take a second to talk about expectations for the rotation that's a perfect way of saying it you know nobody would take offense to that and obviously do it at a, a time where it's appropriate so if they're everyone's busy on your surgery rotation try to find the best time to do it and sending an email on the first day is also appropriate too um you know this is a good way without looking gunnerish of saying like my main goal is to do as best i can on this rotation um so what are your expectations for us um so that's a good framework of starting it um, and there's no shame in asking that question it's recommended awesome that sounds great all right, guys, before we get back to the interview, if you're enjoying this conversation with Tony, go ahead. If you're watching this on YouTube, to hit that like button down below. It truly supports the channel. If you're enjoying the style of watching somebody on their medical journey, get help step-by-step -step on their medical journey and wish you could have somebody in your corner do the same, then consider joining me in the Metal Aid Academy where I do exactly that for all our members twice a month and join you on lifetime group coaching, plus all of the courses that we've created over the past six years. So if you just want to check the Metal Aid Academy, go ahead and link down below. But let's get back to the interview. Uh, a follow-up question question would be um and, and, I, and i know i'm kind of getting ahead of myself but i just I, i've always been the person to kind of work 10 steps or i'd want to know 10 steps ahead just so i could avoid as many mistakes as possible sure and uh, the question is uh when it comes to uh residency and matching mm -hmm. uh, how does your preclinical performance play into that I would say less and less as um, I've experienced more and more um, helping people go through the match and doing it myself, obviously. Um, it, you know, if your institution, did you get graded um, that shows up on a transcript or anything for your first two years? Uh, uh, so um, to be honest with you, I, I don't know the final transcript. I, I hear that it is pass fail at the end. Uh, currently we have a grade, yeah. like it's a percentage, but um, yeah as long as you know so it's a little bit up in the air i mean even yeah. if you had a grade you know if the grade was there it may be a data point that residencies could use uh, but more you'll find that there's really kind of a subcategory of things that people look at um, board exams is going to be one for sure so you're still in the situation where step one will still count um, and somebody somebody watching this who's like a first year med student at this moment step one may not and um, so step two ck is probably going to count more and honestly even in your shoes um Step 2 CK may start to be a focus by the time you're applying to residency um, for residency institutions. They may start looking at that more as just a practice um, year for you know a year later when they're not gonna have that score to really rely on. So board exams is gonna be one fit. Um, your clinical performance, so your honors, high pass, whatever grades that you got on your rotation is gonna be a big one. Um, your recommendation letters is going to be kind of a third category. And then the fourth category is really whatever is to make you interesting. Um, and by that, I mean research experience. If you're applying for you know, a research heavy specialty, dermatology, plastic surgery, um, or at a residency that values that. Um, or extracurriculars that really kind of highlight that this is what I'm interested in. And here are experiences that have indicated that I've explored it. Um, but none of those four categories mention your preclinical grades. Your preclinical years are really the foundation to help you do well on your step one, to help you do well on your rotations. Um, but honestly, I don't remember my grades how to sell bio or biochem or whatnot. Um, and that's, that's for a lesson for a different story. Um, but there, you should think of them as foundational years where you really focus on making sure you gather as much as possible to make your rotations more valuable. So in essence, the preclinical the preclinical years are there just to serve you to kind of build the foundation for the the stuff that actually will exactly kind of look down. yeah. I think over the years we'll find that more and more schools will start to make their first two years pass fail. Um, my institution did that when I started, um, and I'm seeing more and more examples of it. So I think residencies uh, um, are realizing that that's less data point that they can use. And honestly, it's not the most correlative of how good of a you know a future doctor you are. It doesn't matter if you did amazing during your first two years. If you take, can't take care of a patient, then you can't take care of a patient. Um, clinical knowledge that's stuck in your head is useless. Um, so I think they've kind of realized that. And so if it's there, they may look at it. Um, but I don't think that's that's the highlight of your application. So it's not where your focus should be. Awesome. Well, yeah. that's, that's honestly, um, that's all I had. Cool. I as mean, far, as far, 
yeah, as uh, far as like burning questions. Sure. I mean, I I think one other thing I like to give to you and anyone going into rotations because we're at that part of the year where you know rotations are going to start. People for like you know June or July after they take their step one. I know you're not the only one stressed about like how do I do well? Um, how do I make sure that my first rotation isn't like a a fluke or like a, a practice you know a test drive. You want that one to be as great as possible too. Um, it obviously depends on the rotation. So the advice of getting the expectations is really important. Um, but one thing I tell my students um, that work with me is that really the best examples of how you can do well without necessarily clinically standing out is having your patients really vouch for you independently. Um, and the best way to do that is obviously see them in the morning when you pre-round, see them with your team, and then see them in the afternoon. You find that it's less common for students to see their patients again after they're done rounding. They think their responsibility with them is kind of over. But if your patient can say like, oh, I know Tony is my student, or I know he's one of my care providers, and they start to look at you more than they look at their attendings, more than they look at their residents. Um, and if you can start leading conversations and asking them how they're doing and they have a good rapport, there's something about that which you can't really like label into a rubric, but everyone just realizes that you're freaking good at interacting with your patients. Your patients love you. And if you had average knowledge and average patient rapport, then you're gonna get an average score. But I do think that there is something to say about when you have you know, average knowledge that's growing over time. So there is that little bit of an asterisk where you show signs of pro progress, uh, but you have you know, amazing patient rapport just because you spend so much time repeating your interactions with your patients. Um, those show up on your evaluations. Those may lead you from going from like a, a pass or a high pass to an honor student. I've had that happen to me. Um, and I see the the most growth from the students that I work with when they take that advice to heart. So if you see your patients multiple times and you focus on building that rapport without any intention of like hoping they speak on your behalf, you're going to have those patients who are going to say like, Tony was a great, or like Dr. Tony, they're going to think that you're one of the physicians on the team just because you see, they see you so much. Um, and people don't realize that like, I, I only see my patients probably once or twice a day being you know, taken care of 10 to 12. But if you only have two to three, you can see them multiple times a day. You know, if you did something, you're on your neurology rotation, you're on your medicine rotation, you did something in terms of their management plan in the morning, then you can say, okay, let me go check on them in the afternoon to see if what we did in the morning is like helping. You know, if they were nauseous, we started new medication. Are they still nauseous? They were constipated, as small as that is, like has they have they had a bowel movement? in the afternoon. You can report back to your residents. So one, they know you're taking initiative. Two, your patients know you care for them. And some, it just starts to feed in itself. You also become more invested in your patient's care because they'll tell you small things that they didn't get a chance to tell you during rounds. And then you start to look like you're taking care of your patients because you'll be like, oh, the third time I've seen my patient today, they're complaining of some pain here. I like to start this for them. I mean, your resident is like, sure, like, sounds great. I don't see why not. Um, but that doesn't happen if you only see them twice because usually you wake your patient up at six o'clock, they don't want to see you. And then you see them at like nine or 10 o'clock with your, your team and they see so many people that they can't focus on you. So if you want that attention on yourself for your evaluations, the best way to do it is to you know practice providing attention to your patients. Um, and sometimes they'll just like start to report back. Um, and I can't count how many times that's happened to me without the intention of like, I hope this patient speaks on my behalf. If you just do it because you want to be a good, better doctor, um, it starts to move the needle of like where your grade goes from. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah that's, that's great. I, I didn't even think that was uh, a possibility. That's yeah, um, take advantage of any initiative you can have with your patients and without looking forceful. So that doesn't mean like you're trying to force your residents to like focus like, hey, I'm focusing on my patients, pay attention to me doing that. No, just like, you know, I would have a student who I worked with recently who I thought honestly from the start it would be a high pass student. They were quiet, they knew some stuff, they did okay with their patients. But every single day I gave him that tip and he would go see his patients. And sometimes in the afternoon he'd be gone, I thought he went to a restroom and he'd come back and say, hey, I've seen X, Y, and Z. And this person told me this, this person is doing better. And this person actually looks worse. Maybe we should do a, you know, this for them. And that was great to know. Um, that experience was great. I already started to think of that student highly and their clinical knowledge may not have been different than their peers. Um, but they started to just independently get better because they were invested in taking care of the problem that was ahead of them. They looked up how to fix it and they recommended the change. But that wouldn't have happened if they just stuck to the generic pre-round round and then like study the rest of the day kind of thing. No, that makes sense. Yeah. But hopefully that helps you out. Um, hopefully that helps everyone else listening out. Uh, but any other questions, Tony? No, I, no, thank you so much. 
Sounds great, man. Well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate the support and I'm glad that we could do this call and interview. Um, best of luck on your rotations. Best of luck on step one. Um, and let us know, you know, or let me know how things are going. I'll put your uh, Instagram or social media stuff down in case people want to follow your journey as well. Sounds great. Thank you awesome. so much. All right, man. Have a great day. You too. See you later. Bye. All right, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoy this conversation with Tony. Such a down-to-earth human being. And I know he's going to be a great doctor and it's going to definitely make his family and his parents proud. So Tony, if you're listening and watching this, thank you so much for joining us at an interview. If you want to show your support for Tony on his journey, go ahead and drop some good vibes in the comments down below. I'm sure he'll see them. And also you can check out his Instagram handle, which I'll link down below in the description. And just like I mentioned in the episode, if you want more guidance and somebody to be in your corner throughout your medical journey, whether that be your pre-med, medical school, or residency years, learning how to do things like how to study better, manage your time, more efficiently, finally have the time to do the things that matter to you more, as well as preparing for important exams like step one, step two, and obviously matching into your number one residency choice. If all that seems like I wish somebody could guide me, then check out the MetaLead Academy down below because again, not only do I work with all our members twice a month in group coaching sessions just like what we're doing here, but also you get access to all of the courses that we made in the past. So you can check out some of the reviews our students have gotten as well as all the courses that I create in the future. So if you're at all interested, go ahead and check out the link down below, whether it be on YouTube or on the podcast. And on that note, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're watching it this far, that means you probably got some value from our conversation with Tony. So go ahead and hit that like button down below. Let me know in the comment section what you learned, what other questions you may have for similar situations as Tony, and go ahead and hit that subscribe button while you're down there. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, regardless of what your favorite platform may be, consider leaving an honest review on iTunes to make sure this podcast gets in front of more and more people that may really need it. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed this, then you can check out all of the rest of our Doc Talk series episodes that we've done so far here and you can also check out my full walkthrough of Anki right here which I'm sure you guys will love but thank you so much for being a part of my journey I'll see you guys in the next one peace